don't the police ever give you any trouble for, you know, gambling? Don't make me laugh. The cops care about one thing, and that's making sure everyone does their job in the factory every day. All day. They could care less about what we do when we're not at work. That's kind of depressing, man. Yeah, but it's great for business. Nothing doing. Not gonna happen. He already said everything he had to say to me. I'd rather not inhale another of his burps, thanks. No. See ya, Molly. See ya, kid. I'm guessing it's not just your massive hangover that's got you upset. What are you talking about? Sorry, doesn't work. Interesting, but pointless. Nothing, sorry. Have you been here long? I don't think I've seen any other Valerians here in District 8. Been here my whole life, my friend, or all but. Arrived when I was a mere Catholic. And look at me now, a successful entrepreneur.
The sphere is in the guard tower? Locked away! Hidden from view! You must hurry! Rescue the damsel in distress! Or the sphere in distress! Or the boy in distress! I don't really care! Just go and get it and then come back here! I need to get out of here. I need to get back to the surface. Not until you have the sphere! Get the sphere, and then we can talk about your escape! Yep, still a big thing. Interesting, but pointless. Negative function. Not gonna happen. Fail. I think I know who did it. Can we bring the suspects in and try to close the case? Ah, uh, on second thought, a little further investigation might be in order. Interesting, but pointless. I guess that's it. Good. You better get moving. Take care, okay? Yeah, best that I can. See ya, Molly. See ya, kid. Grigor, we'll talk later, okay? I'd like that. What are you guys doing here? Right now, just trying to survive Alicia.
There must be a way. Can you at least give me a list of the items the Overseer had that day? A gold coin. Perfect. That's what I needed to know. Could you give me the names of the witnesses again? Not gonna happen. I think I know who did it. Can we bring the suspects in and try to close the case? Absolutely. Let's nail this murderer to the wall. Nathan. Dr. Cure is positive it was a shovel. It was a crime of passion. These are just the transcripts of all the interviews I've conducted about the murder of the old overseer, Sean. To start, can you tell me what happened that day? Yeah, someone caved in his skull. He was bleeding like a stuck pig. Anything more? Like, maybe what you were doing? Anything else you remember? Oh, come on. It was so long ago. Shit. Let me think. I was outside waiting for Nathan. We'd been dating. Just, you know, having fun. He was the first in the chain, so he was always the first out when their shift was done. Did Nathan talk to you about his work on the chain? He complained about it, of course. He worked beside... Ah, oh, I can't remember his name. You believe that? He'd been a cleaner before going on the chain. He and Nathan got along, I think because they both disliked Gustav, who also worked with them. They would go on about how Gustav was jealous of Sean, how he wanted the overseer's job. I never paid much attention to tell the truth. I just wanted to have a good time. That's all they ever wanted, you know, to have a good time. That good time got someone killed. You know what? People die here all the time. If you're lucky, you maybe find someone to make your life a little better, to give you a tumble, to hold you in their arms long enough to forget your misery. That's maybe the best you can get anywhere. I try to enjoy the little pleasures I find. Right. Well, thank you. If you think of anything else, will you let me know? Sure, but I won't. Was a long time ago, kid. Sorry. I'm investigating the murder of the last overseer. 
I'm told you were a witness to what happened that day? Oh, oh yes. I worked in the kitchen back in those days. I had quite a good relationship with everyone. They were good guys. Do you mind if I record what you say so I can refer to it later? Not at all. You just go ahead and do your job, dearie. Please tell me about the day of the murder. Well, I wasn't working at the factory itself, but I heard all the noise and commotion and I went to see what was happening. And there he was, poor Sean lying there, bleeding on the ground. And everyone on the chain, they were, oh, it was very tense. They were good guys, like I said, but they had a stormy relationship with each other, it's true. I remember them all. James, he fixed the tables. He'd been a carpenter, you see. Then Nathan and Bill, and there was Tom with that huge flashlight of his. It was shining like a beacon when the lights went out. Good guys, but, well, we all have darkness in our hearts, don't we, dearie? I suppose we all do, yes. Thank you for talking to me. I'm recording this so I can refer to it later. So you know. Start with what you remember. The police say you were a witness? Yeah, I was there. It was a very busy day. People in and out of Sean's office, arguing with him. Then, I don't know, all of a sudden Sean was lying there, bleeding, and everybody started shouting. Do you remember anything about the men who worked the chain? They were all suspects in the murder. I don't really remember it. Nothing? How they looked? What they wore? Maybe even how they smelled? Uh, you know, I remember one of them stank of coffee. Yeah, yeah, the guy who sat next to the engineer, he just reeked of coffee. I don't suppose you remember their names, or at least their position in the chain? I don't. I didn't really know them, only by reputation and gossip. But I kind of remember their positions on the chain. I mean, the two I just mentioned, they sat side by side. And the guy who was the baseball fan, he sat next to the guy whose wife was cheating on him. Okay, so tell me about the rumors, the gossip, like that. Who had motive? <laughs> All of them. They always threatened Sean. They threatened each other. They were a rough crew. I remember, I remember one of them, the day of the murder. He and Sean were arguing like mad because Sean owed him money. And this guy, he brought his weights to work. Just started doing reps with him, trying to intimidate Sean didn't work. Sean wasn't afraid of any of them. All right, Gregor. Thanks. I'll see if this helps at all. So, what do you remember? Not as much as I should, I'm afraid, given that it was my first autopsy. I was still apprenticing for Dr. Van Do. It was chaos. The police didn't know what to do. Everyone was in an uproar. I remember that there were multiple suspects with motive and opportunity. One of them... I can't recall which one, I'm afraid. He'd been rather cruelly treated by the overseer. I'm sorry. What does that mean? Well, there was never evidence of physical abuse, but there were certainly reports of verbal abuse, shall we say? Humiliation, teasing. It wasn't ever verified, of course. I just remember the man who worked next to the one being abused. Oh, it kills me that I can't remember their names. Anyway, that man told me about it. I do remember that because the man who told me smelled like a peppermint. Every time he opened his mouth, it came out in waves. He was very fond of his breath mints. Anything else? Well, there was a rumor about the old overseer. He wasn't just a bully, but he was also something of a ladies' man as well. People said he'd been sleeping with the security officer's wife, you see. Sounds like a charming man. I can't say. Anyway, when we arrived at the crime scene, the police had already searched everyone on the chain. All of them had something that could have served as a weapon. One had a dumbbell, one had a flashlight, one had a baseball bat, if you can believe it. The man working beside the one who was being teased, that one had a crowbar. So many possible weapons. And any of those could have been the murder weapon. Oh no, Sean was killed by a blow to the head from a shovel, I'm sure of it. A shovel? You're positive? Did you tell the police? No, I told you my mentor, Dr. Van Doe. He disagreed, thought the evidence was inconclusive. We argued about it, but... I'm absolutely positive that Sean was killed by a blow from a shovel. It's a very characteristic wound. Not a question in my mind about it. All right. Good. At least that gives me the murder weapon. Thank you, Dr. Cure. I wish you luck. Even after all this time, I would still like to see some justice served. I'm looking into the murder of the old overseer, Sean. The policeman I spoke to says you were a witness? 
What do you remember about the chain? Anything else? Scent is a strong memory trigger. You remember anything else like that? Other smells? <laughs> Sure. Thanks. I think I know who did it. Can we bring the suspects in and try to close the case? Absolutely. Let's nail this murderer to the wall. Gustav. Dr. Cure is positive it was a shovel. Jealousy. Blaine's coins, essential part of my escape, I hope.
Greg, keep it up. That boy is getting more fear. We must be on the good way. A small door, very odd. It's got a hole like a slot machine and a small screen. Greg, keep it up. That boy is getting more fear. We must be on the good way. Greg, keep it up. That boy is getting more fear. We must be on the good way. Greg, keep it up. That boy is getting more fear. We must be on the good way. Greg, keep it up. That boy is getting more fear. We must be on the good way. What may be the most disgusting repellent, fossilized noxious sandwich I have ever encountered, and I say that as a woman who has eaten at Frankie's Diner. Not gonna happen. Sorry, doesn't work. No joy there. I think maybe, just maybe, no.
Well, that didn't work. What's exactly your relation to Boss Man? I believed in a dream of an arc for everyone, and I thought he shared that vision. But when I made it a reality, he took it from me. He took it from us! Not sure if you're talking to me or thinking out loud. A bit of both! The sphere is in the guard tower? Locked away! Hidden from view! You must hurry! Rescue the damsel in distress! Or the sphere in distress! Or the boy in distress! I don't really care! Just go and get it and then come back here! I need to get out of here. I need to get back to the surface. Not until you have the sphere! Get the sphere, and then we can talk about your escape! A bottle, once filled with alcohol, now bereft of said substance. Rather a lovely shade of purple with a nice, solid base. What may be the most disgusting, repellent, fossilized, noxious sandwich I have ever encountered. And I say that as a woman who has eaten at Frankie's Diner. Nothing doing. Hey, given that we got him that fancy laser cutter, can't you ask him to cut the bottom of the bottle for us? Tell that huge friend of yours that I'm not deaf, and that yes, I'll cut that for you no problem. Well, I'm calling it a lens, but it's really the base of that purple bottle. But it can be used as a lens, so I'm calling it a lens for lensing things. <laughs> 